welcome to Paper Movies. It's December 2020, and this month we are talking about Steven Spielberg Presents Gremlins, and this book is written by George Guype. Mine so has a yay. barcode on it. Yay, George George Guype. Writing Gremlins. Okay. That cute, clever, mischievous, intelligent, and dangerous. Wow. You what mean a book m- this was for December. I- I'm sorry, you mean mischievous? Mischievous. Actually, I, I don't think it matters. I think it just depends on what part of the country you're from. Yeah. 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 Like, so this book. Um, thought it would be fun to read for, you know, the Christmas season as it is uh, takes place during the Christmas uh, Christmas time. Um, we have Rand. Uh, he's the father of a guy named Billy. And he's out. He's, he's like an inventor. And he's wanting something special, something cool for his son as a gift for Christmas. And he goes to Chinatown where he... Uh, he goes to these little underground shops trying to find something interesting. Well, somebody calls him in and says, hey, I've got something for you. Uh, and it's like a little alien species, okay, called uh, a mogwai, okay? Um, getting a lot of stuff here that I did not pick up in the film, which I watched the film a long time ago. But yeah, the, the mogwai, Gizmo, will be named later on by uh, his new owner, Billy. Uh, he's an alien. Okay, so the dad ran. He buys this creature from the uh, the store shop's uh, grandson, I believe it was. Yeah. And the the old man did not want to sell this little mogwai to to Rand, but you know, little under the table deal. Rand gets it, takes it home to his son Billy, and uh, gives it to him as an early Christmas present. And there are three rules: you can't feed the gremlins after midnight, you can't get them wet, and the third rule. Was uh, I can't remember the third rule. No bright light. <laughs> yeah, no bright no bright light. That's right. So you got to keep them away from the bright light. Can't feed them after midnight, and you don't want to get them wet. And if you do, well, uh, any if you break any of those things, you could either kill it, you can make it reproduce, and uh, yeah, turn it into good. a nasty gremlin. Nasty gremlin. A little furry, nice little cute gizmo turns into a terrifying, ugly little monster that. Uh, Wants to destroy everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this book is crazy. It, okay, can can I jump in here? Well, we should clarify. Yes, Gizmo gets wet. Gremlins happen. Chaos erupts throughout the town. Oh yeah, Gremlins. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an example of a movie novelization that was for a previous edit of the film. Yes. Uh, very much so. Gremlins was a very notorious film when it came out. It's one of the reasons we have the PG-13 rating by the MPAA, because it was not violent enough for an R rating, but it was too violent for a PG rating, and a lot of it had to be cut uh, to keep it uh, PG as opposed to an R-rated film. Unlike its uh, rip-off Critters, which is very much an R-rated film, Gremlins is supposed to be an all-ages film, but is horribly violent, and I love it for that. (laughs) But this was... Should should we just get into opinions right now? What's your opinion, Jer? Yeah, Yeah, come on, Jer. Don't call me Jer. I hate when you call me Jer. (laughs) Um, I really love the second half of this book. Uh, The first half, I thought, was a slog. I thought it was unnecessary, full of a bunch of plot lines that didn't need to be in a book called Gremlins. Uh, The whole plot line with Mrs. Deagle trying to shut down the whole town is really tedious. Yes. Uh, The Gizmo's perspective and the Gremlins' perspective, at first, I was not a fan of. I thought it was bizarre, but as it went on i start i got used to it and i kind of dug the uh stripe and gizmo conflict yeah, yeah. that was very interesting because they have this knowledge that their creator gifted them in their brain mm-hmm. they know things and they don't know why they know things or how they know these things like gizmo knows he's not supposed to get wet because apparently this this thing happened in the past. There's hints that this stuff, uh, gremlin gremlins are a known thing to have happened before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have one of our characters. Uh, I can't recall his name, but he's a uh, he's played he by Dick a, Miller. 
He's a futterman. 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 Yes. He <laughs> drives a like a snowplow. He goes on and on and on about gremlins in World War II. And it, it, yeah, you're right, Jeremy. The book does get pretty tedious uh, in certain spots. Um, I thought the author was very inconsistent in the way that he wrote things. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the sto- the chapters usually when the chapter starts, it's like a completely different author's writing. The descriptions, the dialogue, everything seems more sophisticated and like, oh, it's very you know special literature that he's writing. And then all of a sudden, it turns into this boring. Let's keep dragging our heels, drag certain things along. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm bored now. And then he starts off with the next chapter or something like, I don't know, just fantastical word usage and everything's just like a sudden change. And then it shifts back into this, ugh, I'm having such a hard time. Also, these chapters, like half of them are really, really long. Oh, yeah. My favorite chapter, what was it? Uh, chapter 11. Chapter 11. <laughs> Such a great chapter. I mean, (laughs) two words. It it was... Pete Pete forgot. Yeah, literally, that reminded me of the second Dark Tower book where Stephen King does that, where it'll be like, the plane landed, and it goes into another character's perspective on things, uh, which makes me laugh. This was was an intentional joke that I thought was really funny. It's like, you know, oh, you know, hey... Pete, which Pete, which is a a younger kid uh, who's Billy's friend. Billy, yeah. he's, he's out of college. He's uh, working at a bank. He, so there's this girl that he likes he, named Kate. Um, but there's this kid who's still in high school or junior high, something. Um, and it, he likes to hang out with Billy. They're friends. They're buds. He's also the reason why uh, Gizmo gets wet and reproduces to make more Mogwai, uh, which, by the way, the bad Mogwai uh, cannot hurt Gizmo because he is the minority, right? And they are yes, the majority. Yes, he's the mi- minority because he's immortal, mm-hmm. which is something they established, which doesn't make... Uh, first of all, Gremlins, the movie with the Gremlin rules, the, the Mogwai rules, don't make any sense. The mm-hmm. book makes them make even less sense. Because Giz- they even play it? They, they even turn it into a joke. Yeah, oh yeah, no, they... Which is something that ends up happening in the second movie, where they mm. really start making fun of that. Yeah. Um, t- uh, I have to say, I gave up physically reading the book. And s- thanks to a YouTuber, I'm going to shout out here, the 80s slasher librarian, who he himself did an audiobook for this, props to him. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, he even has the actor that plays Billy... Uh... Uh, appear in the uh, the videos. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, no. He's, he does some solid stuff. He's just finished uh, yeah. reading Friday the 13th Part 3, which is a really hard one to find. Yeah. That's uh, cool. We'll have to uh, let him know that uh, we've tuned in to his channel. Yeah. He could give us an easy route to some other uh, reviews and stuff. So, um <laughs> Adam, what are your thoughts on Gremlins? I like the chapters with the Gremlins in it. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of agree with you guys. There were just times it was just really, you know, drug out. And I just, a lot of the stuff there, I just kind of felt like, you know, wasn't really necessary. But um, once we actually start, you know, with the introducing of the Mogwai and everything, I feel like things pick up for a little bit. But like, as you said, it's just, it picks up and then it kind of slows down. Then it, then it picks up again. And, but uh, overall, I mean, it was entertaining and, you know, I can kind of see it had some Looney Tune effects, especially with like, like, with what happened to Mrs. Uh, Deagle. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that was very unfortunate for her, but, um, no, she deserved it. There's never yeah. been a character. She, she has a wheelchair. Um, she has one of those she, chairs that goes up the staircase. Yeah. She sits in it. She enjoys it. She makes up excuses to, to go upstairs and downstairs. It's the so only she thing, she, this thing she likes other than being an awful human being to everyone. Oh yeah. She's rude. She's mean. She, I guess she got what was coming to her, but yeah, it was funny. They said, uh, she dies. Okay. She, she gets on her chair and the, the, the only way that she could have gone the distance that she, they found her dead body 
is if she was traveling 200 miles an hour. <laughs> so she managed to get from the floor, the first floor of her house to, I'm assuming the second floor of her house, mm -hmm. 200 miles an hour, su super fast. Um, Crashes through a, her either wall or window and flies <laughs> a long time. The one the that, found. that got me, because once the gremlin stuff they get out and like they're running all over the place. The one that got me is they got the police by putting cinder blocks all over the road <laughs> and they ran over <laughs> a wall of cinder blocks <laughs> completely ruined the chassis of the car. Yeah. I remember reading, they even messed with some street signs and it says like, yeah, these people have been on detours for hours, like going in just complete circles and everything. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, it's like I guess they've messed with the TV station and power. Mm -hmm. um, the phone lines. So the only way that people are getting news is through the radio, uh, which is giving like live reports of everything that's happening. Uh, yeah, he's some traffic lights are green, and, like all four lights are green, and then like other traffic lights are all red. So people are crashing into each other. They're stuck there for miles. Uh, the traffic's built up for miles. And yeah, it's just funny because it's like, oh, the detour situation. Like, oh, they're just driving in circles for, for hours. It's, do these Are these people not from this small town? It sounds like it's supposed to be a really small town, but... Yeah, I mean, but it has like a mall. City. It has a mall that a bunch of people get trapped in and get injured in the uh, mm -hmm. the automatic doors. Yeah, the glass doors. And on the escalator... <laughs> Um, there's also the stoplights where some of them are all green and some of them are all red. <laughs> it's, it's just all this mischief, but silly nonsense. Uh, the Mogwai curses. One of them curses. Yeah. It, it, that the honestly curses. reminded me of, uh, critters where in critters, one of the critters drops an F bomb and runs away. Oh yeah. But critters is rated R. <laughs> it's yeah, horribly yeah. violent garbage. Yeah, I want to know what the... I, I wrote it down here. It's Chet's Wibba. It reminded me of an Ewok for some reason. It just sounds like something an Ewok would say from Star Wars. Yeah. Chet's Wibba. Or Chet's Wibba. <laughs> um, that just got us flagged. So, <laughs> some, <laughs> some of some of the um, deaths in this were heinous. Uh, one of them I was familiar with because it was it actually made the first cut of the film and it's infamous was the the, the biology teacher getting killed with all the syringes. Oh yeah, yeah, that was brutal. pretty brutal. Yeah, now, it's a very Toby Hooper thing. Toby Hooper, of course, directed a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one and two, so he's known for putting heinous things in film on film. Um, but. Oh, I can't even remember who produced this film, like what production company, but they said, no, that's got to be pulled. You know, I was uh, reading earlier a very interesting fact about the Mogwai, and I came to the realization that if this film was made in present times, like, like it wouldn't be a movie because, like, if someone were to just look up the meaning of the term Mogwai, most of these events could have been avoided because Mogwai in Chinese means uh, either evil spirit, devil, or monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Um, yeah, the, um, with the, 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 the biologist, yeah, he dies with those needles because he's, he's prodding the, uh, the gremlin. Well, before he's a gremlin, he's a little mogwai. They're doing all those blood doing tests. All these blood tests. They want to figure out, oh, this is a cool little new species that was discovered because they made a big deal out of this um, species being new. Well, in the classroom, I'm, I'm horrible at clarifying things. In the classroom, Pete, he's sitting in his class. They're talking about, oh, yes, new animals are being discovered. He's like, oh, that's cool. And then he goes over to Billy's house, who has a mogwai, and he's like, oh, what is that? Billy's like... I don't know. So then Pete's like, I'm going to talk to my biology teacher. So then, you know, a little reproduction happens there with the Mogwai. They take one of them, give it to the biology teacher. Biology teacher, I've got needles. I'm going to take your blood. And he feeds it after midnight because he's been up all night taking blood samples. So then the Mogwai's pissed. Yeah, I mean... There's a there's a few gremlin deaths that also got taken out of the film, which it was nice to see those in the book, 
Like, uh, I, I can't remember if she actually, uh, the mom, Billy's mom, throws one in the blender or not in the movie. Um, I know she puts one in a microwave. I know one was decapitated, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah it bounces in the fireplace. The, it, At least that's what it says. It, it's really nasty, and they had to be edited down for the movie, like I've said, because it had to be PG if it was going to make any money. Which is a shame. And at the same time, it was the parents hated this movie. Yeah. I can't imagine a children's book of this. Because I know when we were looking for this, I had the hardest time finding this book at first. Uh, you just kept finding the junior novel everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's interesting artwork, in my opinion. Oh yeah, that's the, the cover. Do you like uh, my barcode on mine? Nice. I had one right here on the spine. Yeah, I, I like also had to tape mine a, together. The spine does have a little mogwai in a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Discovered that today, actually. Um, I have to yeah. say, though, what I was going to ask, what did you guys think of Stripe as a villain? Because he kind of kept making me chuckle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, go ahead, Jer. Don't call me Jer. We should, okay, let's explain. <laughs> okay, yeah. Do yeah, you want to do it, Jer? <laughs> we'll get to the stripe thing in just a minute um so there one of the things that's different from the in the book than the movie is there's a lot of time spent at the bank which is tedium incarnate uh, like it, this book takes place over a couple days and billy has to go to work and he works at a bank and his boss is a jerk and this guy who's like the supervisor i guess of the bank is like a couple years older than him and he's like sleazy and a jerk as well and he wants uh he wants Kate honestly I don't even think he wants Kate for the sake of he's even attracted to her that much he just wants to get at Billy I it's, think so too it's like what it comes off as but his name's Gerald and uh Billy figures out that if he calls him Jer it upsets him <laughs> which he has a he has a weird ending in this book too Oh was, yeah, it was just a little shocking and felt very out of place. Yeah, when you mentioned Looney Tunes there earlier, Adam, that's what it made me think of. That was the Looney Tune moment. <laughs> in more ways than one. Uh, yeah, comical like a you'd see in a stupid cartoon where he's all like making stuff up, like oh we're making a bank for little people. Uh, silly nonsense because he's crazy, mm -hmm. you know. But. Uh, yeah, the whole Jer thing. I thought it was funny because he does it. Billy says Jer every single time he talks to him. And he's like, please don't do that. And he's like, all right, Jer. And the guy's just like, oh, pissed off. I, was, I even like, I think I remember hearing him saying, like, oh, I'm sorry, Jer. I forgot, Jer. You know? Yeah. Just kept going and going and going <laughs> with it. But uh, I, I like Stripe as a villain. He's the only gremlin that's like memorable. And yeah. that goes with both the film and the, uh, the book. Whereas like in Gremlins 2, they had more money, so they have a they have a couple of them that are different. Like you have like the bat gremlin, you have the the creepy spider gremlin, um, you have the one with like the lazy eye. Yeah. Well, what made me uh, chuckle a little bit was whenever uh, Stripe dives into a swimming pool and he's just kind of like laying down, he's like floating down there. So I was like, hey, 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 you know, <laughs> which the puppet couldn't do in the first movie. They had so many well, issues was... with uh, getting those to actually move. Well, yeah, it's just the impression I got while reading it. I, I actually saw this movie once, like, when I was a kid. But just the impression I got that he was just kind of like, this is going to be fun, like, as he was floating down to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. Um, I thought he was okay. I, I thought, uh, like we, we, we said earlier, it was kind of comical, the little jabs that Spike would have with or um, Stripe would have with uh, Gizmo when they're both Mogwai at this time. He's like always going up to, to Gizmo and he's like, I know there's something that's keeping me from being like the one with all the power. And he has all these little things like, I'm going to get you one day. I thought that was silly. this goofy. But then when he does turn into the actual gremlin, he doesn't get a chance to really do anything to Gizmo, but well, throw they, him like a football a couple times. Yeah. They torment him and smack him around. Yeah, but I, I thought there could have been a little bit 
something a little bit different with that. Like maybe when, um, like later on in the story, he's trying to hunt down Gizmo, you know, Mm -hmm. I felt like he was just kind of pushed aside for a little bit until the very end after he became the gremlin. Mm -hmm. That'd have been cooler if he was like trying to hunt them down, Billy and uh, Gizmo. It really didn't. Yeah. It sounds like he got caught up, you know, with all the mischievous fun he was having. Yeah. 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 Being in a movie theater. Now, was it, I know we're taking, we're supposed to be talking about the novel, but in the movie, was this the movie that had um, Hulk Hogan in the movie theater? Or is that in the second movie? That's the second movie. There's a second movie? Okay. The second movie has all of the um, the cameos, the cameos and stuff. Because the second movie is a farce. I mean, Futterman's back in the second movie, and he dies. He dies clearly in the first movie. Well, he and his wife both die. They die differently. In the movie, they get run over with the the bulldozer, or the snowplow, mm-hmm. goes completely through their house and runs them over. Yeah. In the book, he's shooting gremlins off his, his roof. roof in his garage, <laughs> and then the garage topples because the snowplow goes through and he's crushed. Yeah. Because in the movie, you could argue they could have survived, but not really. But in this, this is like a for sure uh, confirmed fatality. Yeah. Yeah, all over the radio, multiple times on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy's upset with that. But yeah, yeah I, it doesn't make The second movie doesn't make any sense. And that's like, I, I, I have the novelization here, and I, I can't imagine how bad the novel would be. Maybe it fixed the, uh, fixed the movie. <laughs> well, Toby Hooper didn't care with Gremlins 2. Yeah. He just wanted to make a Looney Tunes movie, but with people in it. Yeah. And more violent. <laughs> more violent. It's funnier. I like two almost in certain ways more than one. I mean, Christopher Lee plays a character called Dr. Catheter. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just nonsense. And when the when the wet bat gremlin comes out of the... Uh, escapes out the window and makes the bat signal with its like yeah. <laughs> when it breaks in, in the wall and mm-hmm. then it get, it gets like cement on it and turns into a gremlin gargoyle yeah it's silly it's it's oh. nonsense we'll talk about that we'll talk about that one in uh next december <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but you know now, what? something else we didn't mention another character in the book was uh billy's volkswagen beetle Oh yeah. They tried to turn that into a character and it uh kind of worked. Uh, it didn't work. I'm going to argue it didn't work at all. It does what it does in the movie. It just it just dies, uh, dies for <laughs> plot convenience purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention this as something that I kind of noticed and we were <sighs> Mrs. uh Deagle, she is like way too committed at very, you know, non necessary things. Like she is like way like uh, obsessed with trying to get Billy fired. Like it's like every time they encounter, she's trying to get him fired. I'm just like, what is your deal with this person? Is this all really just because of a dog? It's because the dog knocked over her ceramic snowman and beheaded it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember that part. It's already like... broken. She was a vicious old lady. Is she was she going to sell everybody's property to a a chemical yeah, plant, a corporate chemical plant? Yeah, ruin that city. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's so farcical, and it doesn't. Yeah, that's like the... <laughs> I was just like reading, like this is like the most vindictive old lady I've ever read about. Just like she kind of reminded me of like the Wicked Witch of the West from Wizard of Oz, like with the same thing, like trying to take away Dorothy's dog and everything. Yeah. Talking about poisoning um, a dog. That's literally oh, what's yeah. being talked about. And that's a that's a plot line for for one chapter. And then it's forgotten about. Well, Billy explains it later on. He's like, yeah, because uh, the one of the stripe is messing with their dog. Um, whose name? Barney. 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 Barney yeah. um, is messing with Barney. And this causes the Billy's mother to be upset because, uh, well, the gremlins... They're not gremlins yet. They become the mogwai. Gremlins, but the mogwai, the bad ones, the, the you know that were reproduced. They they mess with the dog a lot. They pull his tail. They're getting Hoping dog him food. With needles. Getting yeah. They're making his dog food wet and putting it throughout the house. So it looks like 
he vomited up his food. So the mom, she's getting mad at the dog, like, oh, you need to get outside, do this, do that. And so the dog's getting in trouble for things that the gremlins are doing. Mogwai. It doesn't matter. Right. You know what I'm trying to say. So the dog's getting in trouble. And, uh, yeah, the dog winds up getting out of the story for a while, comes back at the end. But uh, I forgot where I was going with all of that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter um, but yeah we learned that Gizmo had a couple of different owners he's, he's on earth for quite a long time um, his first owner I guess was a, a medieval peddler in the 16th century mm -hmm. okay I got a quick question um, since uh, you guys are probably more familiar with the movie than I am could the, Gri the Mogwai and the Gremlins actually talk in the film no they don't. They look at each other, but there's never a conversation. I was kind of wondering about that. I was like, did, was that like done through like subtitles or something? But if they don't actually talk, then no. There's a scene where they look at Gizmo and then they gang up on him, mm -hmm. which is kind of in this book, but kind of not. They yeah. play. They do things differently. Certain scenes are. It's like with Spider Man, where they kind of swap scenes around because it works better in a book one way and it works better in a movie another way mm -hmm. uh, and they do that quite a bit like chapter one is nonsense and it's not in the book at all, not in the movie at all chapter one for the racist stuff <laughs> the stuff that would be questioned today right yeah a... and just yeah, chapter one yeah. well yeah there's some dated terminology in here but it's very brief yeah of, uh... nothing i don't think it's too offensive but of course we, we live in 2020, my, my dudes. Uh, we live in witch hunt society. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, chapter 2 and 3 are swapped in the movie, where chapter 3 is the beginning of the movie and chapter 2 happens. Kind of, sort of. There's uh, Futterman doesn't sing a gremlin song that's terrible. I, I hated yeah. that gremlin song. I thought it was stupid. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stupid stuff in this book, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I was not, um, it was not what I thought it was going to be. No. I found it more, I found, I did find it more tedious than exciting overall. You see, I want to say that I wasn't looking forward to Spider-Man at all, but Spider-Man became like one of the best things we've read on this pod podcast. So I was coming off the high of that and I'm like, Gremlins, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. It wasn't. No. It's not the worst thing we've read on here. Cough, yeah. Predators, cough. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, predator. The Predator still takes the cake. We have yet to review something like a Catwoman, for instance. Yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Matthew. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know. This was not... I didn't. I didn't really enjoy this. Um, so, what would you give it as a rating? Two point three stars <laughs> out of five. Gremlin action gets one star, and the weird changes get the one point three. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it was a slog to get through. Adam? I'm going to have to agree. It was a little tedious to get through, especially, you know, for me, I've been really under the weather this week and trying, and it was really a chore to get through. And um, I don't think, uh, I'm going to say at the most, probably C minus. C minus. Well, okay. Well, that leaves it up to me. Um, while I did have some fun with it, like I said, I found it mostly tedious, boring, hard to get through. I did not like how the author kept mixing up things. Like if he stuck with certain styles, it, it would have been a really good book. Maybe you just like you mentioned, Jeremy, that or Jer, all the edits from the film. Maybe Call just, me Jer. Maybe he got maybe he got two scripts and he's like pulling from both. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to give it. Like what you said, Adam, I'm going to have to give it a C- as well. Uh, like It had some good stuff, 
had some bad, ugh, weird things in it that just were silly. I was going to ask, um, what was everyone's favorite part of the book? Jerry, would you like to take that one first? When it was over? Oh. <laughs> no, uh, it was it was uh, when um, the gremlins started. Anytime the radio came on, it reminded me of another movie novelization that we may get to this year. That I will point out when we get to that. But um, it reminded me of a similar scene in that where you're like, oh, oh my, this is all happening. Specifically, the uh, cinder blocks to the police car. <laughs> I literally didn't they, busted up laughing. <laughs> did they? Didn't they mention that um, like Billy's listening to it over the radio, or somebody's listening to it? Yeah, that's the how they tie it in. Is Billy's been listening to it the whole time? But they don't. They don't tie it in like that first. But the, did they mention um, War of the Worlds? Yeah, like, they br- think it's a practical joke or something. Yeah, the cops think that. That's right. Or no, no, it's uh, the bartender thinks that. I'm going to say my favorite part was the end of chapter 10 and chapter 11. <laughs> I chapter just loved how, yeah. I just loved how 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 that flowed. It was just so hilarious. It's just like Pete was just like or what well, yeah, Pete was his name, right? Fon- mm-hmm. Fon- yeah, he was just like like I swear I scout's honor, you know, cross my heart I will not forget chapter 11. He forgot. <laughs> yeah. I I, yeah. I laughed. Yep, I think that's probably going to have to be my favorite part as well, too, because it, I legitimately laughed out loud when that happened. And I remember like calling you guys up being like, hey, wait till you get to this chapter. It'll blow your mind. I so even funny. told that to my wife, and she laughed out loud, too. Can, can I just throw one more thing in here? Mm, yeah. The way they wrap up Pete's character is terrible. He oh, just yeah. runs away. He runs away, and we never hear back what happened to him. I don't, I don't get it. The, well, the whole last chapter is both tedious and rushed. Yes. It reminded me a lot of the end of... Adam's not read this book, but Matthew has. Remember the end of the Force Awakens novelization? I don't really remember the ending of it. Well, the last chapter picks up... It's ten pages, as I recall. And it goes from the confrontation on the bridge to the end of the movie. Wow. And it is so rushed and mm-hmm. just terrible. It's like my one big complaint with that novelization. And that's what this felt like. And that's yeah. not a good thing when we got literally, let's look at this book. This thing is almost 300 pages. Yeah. There there's no reason for it to be rushed like that and then have yeah. a bunch of this whole so, Deagle subplot that didn't even need to be in there. Yeah, it's like the last two pages uh, is the the Chinese man, the old Chinese man that did not want to sell the Mogwai, uh, shows up on Billy's doorstep to get the Mogwai back. Yeah, I I was gonna say I thought that that was kind of weird because he was like going on just like just like oh you guys are not you know worthy to raise one of these things and then he looks at Billy he's just like eh you might be and I'm just like <laughs> well that's the movie too <laughs> although in the movie he try um, Rand Pel- Peltzer tries to give him like a, a an ashtray invention or something like that too and that doesn't happen in the book yeah um i guess one other interesting thing too i have this in my notes when it's talking about the mogwai they were sent throughout the galaxy so there's other mogwai everywhere yeah uh, the story is focused the, this book is focuses on the mogwai sent to the third satellite of minor sun 67672 which is earth okay you that know there's also <laughs> but the thing is there have to be other mogwai as well, because there's they reference all of these incidents with uh, gremlins, and they aren't all Gizmo. Mm-mm. And that that was unnecessary, too. It turns out Yoda is just a green mogwai. Lives a long time. Pointy ears. I'll stop. Okay, 
Describe how, like, what did you say, like, uh, the something section of this is Earth or something like that, when you are saying the satellite or something? Yeah, it's in Chapter 1. Um, I just actually uh, accidentally deleted my note. Um, oh, oh, you, oh, you mean the the chapter you had me read live on Marco Polo? Yes. <laughs> Among the planets selected for early Mogwai population were Kelm 6 in the Portacity range, Klimf A on the Beehive Pollux, and the third satellite of Minor Sun 672, a okay. small but fertile body <laughs> called Earth by its you know inhabitants. What, you know what vibe I get from that? I am your father's brother's cousin's best friend's former roommate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I get from that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, chapter one is a very strange, strange yeah. chapter. Yeah. That that's that's a that's the, something. The Chinese man that owns him feeds him garbage, like a, it's like talking about a rubber washer. Yeah. Here, eat, watch him eat this rubber washer. Like, why are you doing that? And they reference him eating packing peanuts. Yeah, they feed so mean. And then it turns out later on in the book, Gizmo's like, oh, thank God he's not feeding me cardboard or something. Turns out he's just eating that garbage. To amuse the Chinese man. It gets messed up. <laughs> it is. So stupid. I mean, like, because he literally, literally goes, Gizmo's like, okay, I have to lay down the law with these people and I won't eat garbage for yeah. them. And if I have to live with these people, because he's, he's miserable on the drive, yeah. drive with Rand. And he's like, Oh no! The only thing I had to do—I was left in peace. I just had to eat garbage for this guy. But if I'm not yeah. going to be in peace, then I'm not going to eat trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, a uh, a very strange C minus for the uh, story. Gremlins is. Do you guys have anything else that you guys want to add to uh, this discussion? Um. Go check out 80s uh, horror librarian or 80s slasher librarian. Um, okay, yeah, I'll put a link down his uh, to that video for the Gremlins uh, read along. Because uh, if you guys would like to watch it, it was fun. Yeah, yeah he also has a, you could listen to it chapter by chapter or the whole thing. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, so. Uh, that concludes the December 2020 Novelization Book Club discussion for Gremlins. So, next month, a new year. Oh, yes. Jeremy's got a pick. Jeremy, what is our, our pick here? In space, no one can hear you scream. Alien by the maestro of all movie novelizations, Alan Dean Foster. Also, I just want to say thank you, Jeremy, for giving me this copy. You're welcome. We got to support uh, Mr. Foster and all of his uh, problems mm. with uh, royalties right now. Yep. Yep. So, Well, guys, thank you all for tuning in, watching this. Have a wonderful, happy new year from all of us here at Paper Movies. Uh, have a good one. Yeah, have some good reading. Stay Gucci, people. <laughs>